defeated AI. Thou canst not stand before thine enemies till you take away the accursed thing from among you. Reading Joshua 7 and 8 Reading Joshua chapter 7 and chapter 8 Objective To show that Yahweh requires obedience, our actions can so easily affect others. In this record, the sin of one man brought a shameful defeat and the deaths of 36 men. God would not be with Israel until the sinner was found. Background Confident after the resounding victory at Jericho, Israel moved on to conquer Ai, the next town in their line of attack. However, a disaster was about to occur to dampen their joy and enthusiasm. Defeat at Ai in Joshua chapter 7 verses 1 to 4 Ai means ruin and it was A royal city of the Canaanites about 20 kilometres northwest of Jericho It stood at the beginning of the maze of hills and valleys that led to the hilly country of Canaan Although it had no great size or strength, it was important for Israel to take the city because it controlled the main route into the land of Canaan. Joshua sent men to spy out Ai, to check its situation, its defence and its population. The men come back confidently to Joshua. Ai is only a small town so it should only require about 3,000 of Israel's soldiers to defeat it. You will notice, however, that they did not consult Yahweh in the matter. Even faithful Joshua seems to have forgotten to pray to his God for guidance. About 3,000 men made the march to Ai, only to be defeated. The men of Ai drew them back and pursued them, killing 36 Israelites. They chased them from before the gate even unto Shevram and smote them in the going down. Verse 5 What was the result of this shameful defeat? The hearts of the people melted and became as water. Where have you heard these words before? Previously we have read them in relation to the state of mind of the Canaanites. Chapter 2 verses 9, 11 and 24 now the tables were turned because of one man's disobedience. Joshua appeals to Yahweh. Joshua chapter 7 verses 6 to 9. Joshua was full of despair and grief. Why had this happened? How could Israel continue in their campaign? Joshua and the elders of Israel tore their clothes and put dust upon their heads. This was a sign of their mourning and humiliation. They fell on the ground, showing their worthlessness, before the Ark of the Covenant to find out why this tragedy had occurred. Notice Joshua's chief concern. O oh Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their backs before their enemies? And what wilt thou do unto thy great name? Verse 9 he knew that God's purpose was bound up with the tribes of Israel. God reveals the problem. Joshua chapter 7 verses 10 to 15 Get ye up, said Yahweh. There is nothing to be gained by bemoaning what has happened. Action was needed. Israel had sinned. Verse 11 What had they done? God tells them that they had Transgress God's commandment by taking goods devoted to him. Stolen from Yahweh their God, lied in verse 11, disassembled. Put the stolen goods among their own possessions. Notice how many times the word accursed or devoted occurs in the verses 11 and 12 twice, and verse 13 twice, and verse 15 God emphasises to Joshua that Israel had sinned by taking what was not theirs. Because of this they were cursed. Neither will I be with you any more, except you destroy the accursed from among you. In verse 12. 
In verses 14 and 15, God explained to Joshua the way in which the sinner would be found. For the first time we find that the sin was by one man who had wrought folly in Israel. Principle for living. The sin of a few can affect many. Jericho was the only city completely devoted to God. But one man could not give this to God. Because of his sin, the whole nation suffered, including the deaths of 36 of his brethren. There was an important lesson here for all of us. Do we stop to think what the consequences of our actions would be? For our young people, there is a special message. You may rush into a course of action or way of life without thinking about how it may affect your family and friends and the young people in the ecclesia of God. Just think of how the men of Ai would have been rejoicing about their victory and boasting about their gods being better than Yahweh, all because of one man's greed and sin. It was relatively easy to know what God wants us to do, but not always so easy to obey. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. See James 1 verse 22. And see also 1 John 5 verses 2 to 3. The Apostle Paul tells us that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. 1 Corinthians 5 verse 6 and Galatians 5 verse 9. Sin can so easily spread. Let us make sure that our example will be to the positive upbringing of those with whom we mix. This will also bring glory to God and elevate his holy name. The Sinner Revealed, Achan's Confession, Joshua 7 verse 16 to 23. Early in the morning Joshua assembled the tribes of Israel. By casting lots they found that the guilty person belonged to the tribe of Judah. Then the family of that tribe was revealed, then the household. Imagine the hushed, tensed atmosphere as the lot finally showed Achan to be the sinner who had caused such trouble to God and the nation. However, Joshua spoke kindly to Achan. My son, give, I pray thee, glory to Yahweh Elohim of Israel and make confession to him, and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. In verse 19. Why would Achan's confession give glory to God? It would show that God was right in withdrawing his help when Israel attacked Ahai. Achan confessed, I have sinned against Yahweh. I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonian garment and 200 shekels, about 2.3 kilos of silver, and a wedge of gold, 50 shekels weight, approximately 0.6 of a kilo. I coveted them, I took them. Behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent, and the silver under it. Then Joshua sent men to Achan's tent, and they found it was exactly as Achan had said. Achan's name means trouble, and he had certainly troubled Israel by his greed and covetousness. But had Achan gained any pleasure from these stolen goods hidden in the ground? Was it worth it? Sin never is. Punishment Joshua 7 verse 24 to 26 The three items Achan had stolen were laid out before Yahweh to whom they belonged. Then Joshua and all Israel took Achan, his family and his goods he had stolen and all his possessions to a valley they later named the Valley of Achor which also means trouble. Joshua said why hast thou troubled us? Yahweh shall trouble thee this day. Verse 25. Then all Israel stoned them and burnt them and all their property. You will notice that Achan's family was also destroyed. They were involved in his sin, for they knew that he had taken the goods and would have known where they were hidden. 
How true are Solomon's words. He that is greedy of gain troubleth his own house. Proverbs 15 verse 27 Unlike the heap of stones that reminded Israel of their miraculous crossing over Jordan, this heap would remind them of the consequences of sin and that Yahweh required obedience. Basic Bible Doctrine The Process of Sin Achan's confession was, I saw, I coveted, I took. This is how all sin arises. It is a progress. James 1 verse 14 to 15 says, But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when his lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. The pattern started when Eve saw and coveted the fruit, and involved Adam in disobeying God. Through their sin, death came on all men. Romans 5 verse 2 in our lives we need to stop the process before lust is allowed to take root Achan's sin began with what he saw with his eyes and then coveted as soon as a suggestion of sin comes in our minds we need to learn to refuse it otherwise the thought will lead to sin and sin when it finishes brings forth death if we earnestly seek to please God, the only way to overcome temptation is to combat it with a principle of truth. That is how Christ succeeded in obedience to his Father. Matthew 4 verse 4, 7 and 10 Faith Restored, Joshua 8 now there was nothing standing in the way of God helping Israel. Joshua was told to fear not, for God would deliver Ai into his hands, in verse 1. Israel would be able to destroy Ai and its inhabitants, just as they had destroyed Jericho. However, on this occasion they were permitted to keep the goods and cattle, verse 2. Unlike the previous attack on Ai, this time Joshua took the whole army. From this army he chose 30,000 of his best warriors, verse 3. He divided these into two groups. 5,000 were to hide on the west side of the city and form an ambush, verse 12. Joshua and the remaining 25,000 would camp in front of the city on the north side. On a hill opposite with a valley between them and Ai, verse 11. These groups were put in place overnight. In the morning Joshua and his men moved down into the valley toward the city. When the king of Ai saw this group in front of his city, he prepared his army and rushed out confidently, thinking that they would have another easy victory. It appeared to him that his enemy was trapped in the bottom of the valley. As the soldiers of Ai and Bethel ran toward them, Joshua and his men turned and fled. The men of Ai pursued them, imagining that they would be the victors, as before in verse 14 to 17. However, Joshua stretched out his spear as a signal to the men in ambush, verse 18. Rising up out of their hiding place in the valley behind Ai, they entered the city and set it on fire. Verse 19 As the smoke ascended, the enemy realized that they had been caught between the two groups of Joshua's army. Verse 20 The Israelites who had pretended to flee turned back upon them, and those that had been in ambush came toward them and attacked. Verse 21 verse 2 the city and its inhabitants were completely destroyed. The king of Ai was publicly executed. Verse 29 When the Israelites had taken the spoil, Joshua made sure that Ai was burned to the ground. Verse 28 Summary Israel was very confident about attacking Ai, but on their first attempt they were defeated and 36 men died. 
When Joshua prayed to God, he was told that someone in Israel had sinned. By casting lots, Achan was chosen and Achan confessed that he had disobeyed God in taking goods from Jericho. Our sins can bring despair and grief to others. Achan and his family were stoned and burnt with fire. God was then with Israel and they destroyed Ai and his people. Digging deeper. Ai means ruin. Their king was a type of King Sin. Paul portrays sin as a king who wants to rule over us. Romans 6 verse 12 But in our warfare of faith, sin must be slain and brought to ruin. The king was hung on a tree, which reminds us of crucifixion. Sin can only be overcome and finally destroyed by putting it to death in our lives. Galatians 5 verse 24 That is, by not allowing its influence to rule us like a king. The fact that Ai was totally destroyed shows that God wanted the Canaanites destroyed, otherwise their influence would have affected Israel. A further look at the goodly Babylonian garment. In the RSV translation, it is as a beautiful mantle from Sinar. Shinar was the site of ancient Babylon. At that time, the Babylonians were regarded as the finest of weavers. Cloth made by them was something to be prized. Josephus states that this was a royal garment woven entirely of gold. If so, it would have been a dazzling prize. Achan was unable to resist the temptation. Let us not be dazzled by the clothing of this world. These lessons are the words taken from the Christadelphian Sunday School Association notes www.cssa.asn.au used with permission. Email your questions to readthebible2 at gmail.com and we look forward to you listening to the next lesson which will be called the Gibeonites.